I define journalism as uh, a news article that is based very closely on a press release. A press release is three or four paragraphs sent out to a bunch of journalists telling them about a new product, a new service, whatever it is. Uh, the problem is that what often happens is that that press release is then cut and pasted into uh, a news article. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, we set up a website called uh, journalism.com, which allows the public to, to compare press releases with journalism and find out uh, exactly which news articles are based on press releases. So uh, we went to, uh, to you, to Chris Atkins, and, and said, you know, how are we going to raise awareness? So we challenged Chris to create a bunch of press, fake press releases, um, uh, false stories, and see if he could uh, get them out there through the news. If you want to make something true in the media, all you have to do is put it on the internet. So I asked my friends at Disturb Media to make a website for a fictitious PR company. And how, how long approximately did it take you to put the site together? Um, a couple of hours, maximum. Two hours to build the site. We then set up a male beauty products website that was about to launch its latest hot product, the Panazzle, the male version of the Vajazzle. Unfortunately, we needed someone to model it. So this is going to really hurt, you think? That'll be fine, OK? Ah, oh, shit! The photos were taken and placed on the website. And then I wrote a press release saying the Panazzle would be the next big thing. I emailed it to the news desks of every national newspaper and then Dan called them up to pitch them the story. I sent you a, um, a kind of press release regarding the Panazzle. I'm just checking to make sure you got it. I mean, I, I've got one. I'll, I'll be honest. Girl, girlfriend loves it. Absolutely loves it. Basically, in the run-up to Valentine's Day, our sales for Panazzles have shot through the roof. What's it say? Uh, gonna run with it tomorrow. Gonna run with it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. The next day, the story appeared in The Sun, the largest selling paper in Britain, with whole chunks of text lifted straight from the press release. Part of the problem is that, is that PR has grown enormously in the last few years. The UK PR industry is the second biggest in the world. Um, there are more people working in PR than there are in journalism now. So there's huge quantities of, of this stuff going out. And, and an awful lot of it is getting into our mainstream news. It said that about 54% of news articles, at least partially, derived from press releases. So this is now really quite a significant problem. To make the problem worse, I decided to branch out into lingerie and invented the chastity garter. This luxury garment sits on a lady's thigh and can detect if she's getting sexually excited and sends a text message to her husband or boyfriend. In fact, it's a normal garter I bought from Asda with a digital watch taped to it. I modeled it with Sinead on my fire escape and wrote a press release saying it was becoming increasingly popular with premiership footballers and gypsies. I sent it through to every news desk, but nobody wanted to know. OK, brilliant. Thanks. Cheers, bye. So as a last resort, I sent it through to a news agency, who immediately put it out on a newswire. It promptly appeared in the Daily Star and on the Daily Mail's website, despite both news desks originally turning it down. It became the most read article on the Mail's website that day with 41% of the copy lifted directly from my press release. Dozens of international websites then cut and pasted the Mail's article, including Germany, Malta, Israel, India, and the United States. Just in time for Valentine's Day, nothing says love like lingerie that sends a text when your lady is about to be unfaithful. The Chastity Garter comes equipped with a hidden microchip that claims to detect a rapidly rising pulse. It comes in lace or silk and costs about a hundred dollars. Boy, couldn't she also be attacked by a lion or something? Wouldn't yeah. that jump your pulse rate up a little bit? Or play, playing tennis. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Channelism can be copy and pasted from anywhere. It could be copied from press releases, from uh, news wires. It could be copied from Facebook groups, uh, but it's just, it's copy and pasted without any checking, without any changing, without verifying, etc. After Larry the Cat moved into Downing Street, he made headlines around the world, and the news media blatantly wanted any stories about that cat. So I set up a Facebook group about a woman who was claiming that Larry was in fact hers. 
Within hours, we received a message from a Daily Mail journalist telling us they would be running a story and lifting quotes and photos. An hour later, it was on the Mail's website and we've received interview requests from The Mirror, ITV Daybreak and Radio 5. The website works very well with UK Press. The website's been great in terms of identifying both where the churn's gone and how much churn there's been, which has been fascinating. We need the public's help. We need the public's help because we don't know where all those press releases are. So we need, we need you, the public, to go to the site, to paste in press releases, um, to save them on the site so that, th that we and the rest of the public can see, can see for themselves which articles are based on press releases and which aren't, and we can make more transparent the channelism that's out there.